We are about 40 minutes past the hour on this Saturday. Thanks for sticking with us. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Those words uttered 55 years ago today by Neil Armstrong when Apollo 11 safely landed on the moon, successfully fulfilling President John F. Kennedy's goal. Here with us is former NASA astronaut who has spent months in space and aboard the International Space Station where he was a commander, Leroy Chow. Leroy, welcome back. Great, great to be back, thanks. 55 years, talk to me about this historic moment and how it's still the pinnacle when it comes to space exploration. Absolutely. I was eight years old watching this event live 55 years ago today, but I remember like it was yesterday watching that old grainy black and white TV set with the rabbit ear antennas, watching that scene unfold in the Mission Control Center, listening to the transmissions coming back from the moon, and then listening to Eagle actually land on the moon. It was just so amazing. I, I went out there a little later, looked up at the moon, and realized up there almost a quarter of a million miles away these astronauts were getting ready to take those first steps. So that's that's what inspired me to want to become an astronaut myself. That started the dream for sure. That is incredible. And besides you becoming an astronaut, of course, since landing on the moon, what other significant data or discovery has come from the moon? So we learned a lot from our lunar exploration. Of course, we brought back a lot of rocks and, and lunar regolith or the, the, the dirt, if you will. Uh, a lot of it is still sealed up and not hasn't been opened since uh, the 60s and 70s when we were flying the Apollo missions. But we keep making discoveries. One of the big discoveries, I think, is that evidence that the moon uh, probably came off of the Earth. We suspected that for a long time, but a lot of the uh, geological evidence that we found on the moon confirmed that. And so, you know, there are other things that were found, of course. We found a lot of volatiles from the solar wind that were deposited and stay in the, the, the regolith or the dirt. And, um, you know, just we continue to make discoveries. And I think that that's a good reason. One reason are the scientific reasons to go back. Yeah. Speaking of going back, now non-astronauts can fly to space, just space lovers who have an interest in this. What does that say about the state of technology and innovation in the United States when it comes to space travel? Well, right, absolutely. So we've gotten to the point where we've actually been able to make it commercially viable. Now it's still out of reach for the vast majority of us, right? I mean, uh, you know, you're talking about people with hundreds of millions or billions of dollars that can afford to, to go. If you look at the cost of a rocket, you know, the cost has come down dramatically in the last few years, thanks to SpaceX, but um, it's still a pretty big number. You know, even for a, a used Falcon 9, you're still talking around $35 million. So, you know, divide that by four people going up. That's still a big number. Uh, yeah, probably not in my lifetime. I don't think I'm going to the moon, but certainly a huge milestone. I do want to switch gears here, Leroy. We have to talk about Boeing's Starliner. It's still stuck in space. It was supposed to be a week-long mission. It's turned into over a month long. They're still up there. Last time you were here, you said you were not concerned about the crew being stuck. It's been a few weeks. Have you changed your mind about that or your opinion? Well, we've learned a little bit more since then, and I, they're still not stuck per se. If there is an emergency and they need to evacuate the station, the Starliner has been declared uh, operational. That is, they can get in that vehicle and come home. NASA and Boeing have confidence in the, the, the system. It will work. Now, uh, they, we do know a little bit more. Uh, those thrusters that failed on approach to the station, what happened there? It looks like they were firing. The thrusters were all firing more than uh, NASA and Boeing expected. Some of them overheated and apparently kicked offline. Mm. Uh, they were able to get four of them back online, but they're trying to understand exactly what happened. Why, uh, why did they fire too much? Why did they overheat? Was it some kind of a software problem. They've been trying to recreate it uh, here on the ground at the White Sands testing range uh, to try to better understand what was going on, just out of an abundance of caution and conservatism. Uh, but uh, at the same time, they're not really stuck. You know, the vehicle has is, is not been declared by any means, um, you know, not uh, flight worthy. So, you know, they're biding their time. I'm sure they're wondering, too, when they're coming back. But at the same time, astronauts, we, we like being in space, so they're not uh, they're not uh, they're not hating it. <laughs> All right. Well, we're excited about when they're back on Earth today. Leroy Chow, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.